In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an object or a ball that bounces off of the walls. So this isn't to be confused with creating gravity that's pulling objects down towards the ground. Um, this is more of objects that say, uh, like Pong, where it's just bouncing off the walls in opposite and opposing directions. So here's what I have so far. I have a couple variables up here, ball x, ball y, ball width, ball height. And down here in draw, I make an ellipse using these variables. So we just have a ball on our screen that, of course, is just sitting stationary. We're going to create a couple more variables here. For motion, you need direction and speed in order for that to happen. That's just the laws of physics. So we can say ball direction x equals 1, ball direction y equals negative 1. Uh, if you only want the ball to be able to bounce in one direction, technically you do not need both of these, but if you want it to be able to bounce all the way around the screen, you would need x and y, and it doesn't actually matter which one's one or negative one, you just want them to be opposite from one another. That would just uh, determine the initial direction the ball is traveling. And then lastly, we need ball speed. Ball speed equals one. We'll just set everything equal to one or negative one for now. In draw, above where we have our ball, we're going to say create our motion. So we're going to make the ball move based on direction speed. And all we have to do is a very simple little equation here where ball x equals ball x plus, in parentheses, ball direction x multiplied by ball speed. And then we're going to do the same for y. So ball y equals ball y plus ball direction y times ball speed. And what that's going to do is it's going to multiply the direction of x times speed and add that to the current x position. So it's actually going to move based on its direction and speed variables. Same for y. And if we were to run this code, we now have a ball that's just moving in the upwards direction here. And it's going to continue moving infinitely off the screen. So the next thing we have to do is actually make it bounce off of the wall. So in another video, I did talk about collisions using if statements. So something like if ball x is less than zero off the left of the screen. And what we need to do is we just need to change its direction. So ball direction x equals ball direction x times negative one. In math, when you times a number by negative one, it equals itself, but the opposite sign. So that would just change its direction so it's going to bounce the other way. And we need to do that if it's off the right of the screen, which would be if ball x is greater than width. Then we need to do that for y. So if ball y is less than 0, that's off the top of the screen. And we're going to take ball direction y times ball direction y. Uh, times negative 1. And one more. If ball y is greater than height, off the bottom of the screen, ball direction y equals ball direction y times negative 1. And if we just go ahead, let's see, 1, 2, 3, I missed one. Which one am I missing? I'm missing the width. So if ball x is greater than width off the right of the screen, ball direction x equals ball direction x times negative 1. All four. There we go. Four, four, four walls, four if statements. So if we go ahead and run this, now our ball should hit the wall and bounce off the corners. And you can speed this up by very simply changing your speed. So if we say ball speed is, say, 3, Now you have a ball or object that could bounce. And again, this would work whether it's an ellipse, a square, an image that you want bouncing off the screen over and over and over again. Uh, again, this isn't affected by gravity. It's just creating a bouncing simulation using collisions and variables.